Hola a todos, yo soy Samuel, y para los que no me conocen, estoy aprendiendo español. And today, I'm joined with Shane Godleman out of the United Kingdom. Uh, he is a fellow Spanish learner, podcaster, dancer, juggler, general language learner, freak of nature. Uh, <laughs> That, that uh, is coming on just to kind of share some experiences uh, with learning Spanish and, and kind of provide more of a Castilian Spanish perspective. So, Shane, we appreciate you having you on. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, pleasure to have you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we can just, we'll just jump right in. Let's do it. Uh, the, the main question I have, I mean, growing up in the UK, my mom's from England, Uh, I've spent some time over in the UK. I understand that the main la language taught in, in schools across the nation is French. I mean, you're, you're only a, you can literally take a train under the ocean to, <laughs> to, right? into Paris. It, it's, the, it's the closest yeah. to the ocean, um, and it, it just makes the most sense. And that being said, you also have other countries you know within a two-hour flight you, you know you can go to the netherlands germany italy portugal mm -hmm. uh, why spanish what what jumped out to you as, as you know to interest you into learning the spanish language um my interest in spanish i would say has pretty much nothing to do with the school system um i went to spain uh, on holiday as a kid most years um my grandparents i was very lucky my grandparents bought like a holiday home Uh, in a little uh, town in Alicante called Torre Vieja. Yeah, we would go there in the summers. And so I never learned to speak Spanish when I was younger because it's a very, very touristy place. You you absolutely don't need it. More than half the population is English or German. Um, so yeah, there's loads of English. And so we would just go to the bars, go to the beach, whatever. But I always kind of liked Spain. You know, I enjoyed my time there or whatever. You're absolutely right. Uh, most people learn French in school. Um, some of it has to do with the proximity, I think, Some of it also has to do with, like, historically, French has been seen as a very high-class language. It used to be, you know, a sign of, of, yeah, being high class and all that kind of stuff. And anyway, I imagine some of that has um, continued into our school system. But So I actually studied French in school um, with very little results. I couldn't speak any French to you now. Um, and so, yeah, my interest in Spanish is one of those things that I'd kind of always said I would do but never did etc etc and um, I really don't know what sparked my initial interest I think I had a bit of time on my hands and Duolingo was still on my phone uh, and so I kind of got a little bit into it and then it was a bit more fun because I realized oh, I'm not at school now I can kind of do what I want with it and mm -hmm. then uh, I was you know I've always been a big YouTube guy like we were saying earlier and so suddenly I was like hey let's go see what language stuff's on YouTube and suddenly I was sort of you know into the world and then now we're here so there was no one particular reason i do love spain as a country um but yeah so i figured you know i would i would love to go back to spain and explore because i've been to spain probably like 10 times and i've only been to that one place actually no we went to one other place but it's pretty much the same so i've never been to like what anything like what i would call real spain so i think that inspired me as well um to to really You know, I'm like, if I love tourist Spain, then the rest of Spain is going to be great. So, yeah. You'll get a totally different experience being immersed into the language and into the culture. That's that, the hope. That's the idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And that, that kind of a perfect segue, because uh, you mentioned YouTube. I know you are a YouTube creator. Uh, I'm subscribed <laughs> to your channel. Uh, and, and you've posted various videos about your Spanish learning journey. Mm -hmm. uh, what, are, what are your current like your your day-to-day -day or whatever routine you have for learning Spanish, what are your current resources? I know you mentioned Duolingo. That's always a great place to start, uh, mm -hmm. but you know it won't take you all the way to where you want to go. Um, so, yeah, I guess what, what what's in your toolbox right now? What, what are your what are your, your daily routines, apps, programs, and otherwise that, that you're using to learn Spanish? Um, I really don't know if I have any at the moment because all I've been doing, especially for the last six months, I've been very focused on just immersing, just spending as much time as I could within reason, um, listening, reading, whatever. And so in my day is full of, of native content. Basically, I watch... Um, recently, I've been mostly reading. I read like novels and stuff like that, which is something I've got into through learning Spanish. I, ne I never liked it in English. I don't read fiction in English, but 
interesting. Yeah. It, it kind of, I started with like short stories and then I was like, oh, this is kind of cool, this is helpful. And then I tried to read Harry Potter and that was quite cool. And then I tried to read a real book and I, I'm pretty sure I knew what happened at the end and that was fascinating. So yeah. that was it, the, the spark. Um, and I think this is something that I'd seen on someone else's channel, but you know, books are really cool because when you compare them to series, there's so much more content. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they have to describe the scene, the the appearances of the people, the facial expressions, blah, blah, blah. Or everything has to be explained through the language. So I recognize that as well. Um, but yeah, I, I read novels. I watch series on Netflix. Uh, there's a couple of YouTube channels uh, that I watch. One I watch religiously because I'm a big NBA fan. So there's a, a Spanish channel about the NBA. So And that luckily they upload every day. So I get, you know, guaranteed 15 minutes. Um, and it's really cool because it's just like two guys chatting they're about my age I'm, I'm 29 um they're about my age so they use you know similar ish language to what i would use if i was you know living in spain or whatever and so yeah watch youtube watch netflix read and uh i suppose in the way of resources i use spanish dict which is a website you're probably familiar with anyway um an absolute gold mine of a find because there's just so much on there the conjugations the example sentences the, the thesaurus all this stuff so yeah, that's the only other thing. Um, oh, actually, that's a lie. I do a little bit of Anki. I do a little bit of flashcards, but it's like 10 minutes a day just for the odd words that I keep stumbling on or the quirky words that I would like to add to my vocabulary because I'm a bit weird like that. Yeah, I know a lot of people use Anki, but uh, I know they use that a lot with reading books. You, you know, you'll, you'll find a lot of specific vocabulary mm -hmm. when they're describing something that, you know, the word might be a, a little bit more lavish or, mm -hmm. you know, more specific. Mm -hmm. I've heard great things about that. Uh, and I just wanted to touch, you said uh, you are a huge NBA fan. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people get burnt out learning a language because, I mean, when you start out and, and you're a total beginner, you're kind of at the mercy uh, to what, whatever program you're talking about, you know, whatever program you're learning with. Yeah. So you're going to learn phrases like, I go to the beach. I like to eat pizza, um, but I think that, you know, as soon as you can start to understand, you know, maybe even not even every other word, but, you know, for that for that immersion into the language, you can watch a 15 minute video about the NBA and it's in your target language. I think that's huge. I think more people need to, you know, it, it's OK if you, if you like video games, keep watching video games or on YouTube or whatever you do, but watch it in, in Spanish or, you know, if you yeah. love baking double check the recipe but learn it in spanish <laughs> i think that's a, i think that's a great idea that, that's really neat um i think double checking the recipe is an even better idea in that yeah, example uh, yeah i like that <laughs> uh, no it's, it's i've been consistently trying to say like you know enjoy find a way to enjoy it find a way to make it a part of your life like don't make it a chore like exactly like you said take the things you already do and just convert them into spanish because that's the kind of the beauty of having language as a as a an interest or a hobby or whatever you however you would class it is it's it's not like i don't know tennis or you know an activity you can mm -hmm. do whatever with the language so right. yeah i i think uh the sooner you can get stuff that's really interesting to you the the better you're gonna do and you know you're gonna it, it just makes it so easy i don't have to try to learn spanish i want to watch the videos to read so the books you're, to, you you're interested in the content exactly spanish kind of slots in there that's great this is a question because you're over in europe you've already mentioned that you you have some exposure to spain mm -hmm. you're obviously you know I, I watch your videos you follow kind of a castilian spanish accent when it comes to finding this content mm -hmm. uh, or language learning tools do you feel like you do you struggle to find language learning content uh, or content in general out of spain i understand a lot of it comes out of latin america especially like you know, the learn Spanish software, a lot of it comes out of Central and South America. Do you, what's your experience finding that, that interesting content to consume in um, your accent? Yeah, it's a good question. I, it hasn't been difficult for me, to be honest. I, my experience has been that both sides complain about that being true. Like, yeah. people that want to learn Latin American say that there's loads of Spanish stuff and, and vice versa. Uh, with the NBA specifically, it's been a little bit more difficult, or it was a little bit more difficult. I think probably, you know, because it's an American sport, we don't really follow it here in the UK, so there's just going to be more exposure maybe to Latin America. But Spain, 
are a big basketball country at the same time so you know i managed to find some stuff but um whilst it's a small country it's still quite rich i suppose in the grand scheme of things uh and so they have a decent sized um economy for their you know cinema industry and mm-hmm. tv industry and that kind of stuff so there's um I think I got very lucky as well because with the enormous success of La Casa de Papel, Netflix have gone all in, not only on Spanish series, but on sp- series from Spain. Uh, yeah. There's been there's been a lot this year, over the last couple of years, that have uh, been released. Uh, and once you find, you know, a show, I end up just looking at, like, the actors and then I see what other kind of stuff they've been in and then you find a new show with new actors and new people. And so I just kind of jump from one place to the next through that and obviously with youtube the algorithm does it for me um and with books the same you know i just research authors from from spain or whatever and then eventually you start to know more and more and yeah so yeah to be honest it hasn't been too difficult uh, so far to find interesting stuff in a specific uh, in european spanish let's say that's cool that that, that does make sense i know there's uh, I don't want to be wrong in the interview, but 70 million that live in Spain? I, I have no idea, so let's say yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll say 70 million. And <laughs> if I'm wrong, then it's just going to get cut out. Um, uh, two-part question. Mm-hmm. How long have you been actively trying to learn Spanish? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and what are your ultimate goals with Spanish? I understand you're, you're dabbling with other languages. Uh, I saw that you, you learned... Uh, an impressive amount of Portuguese in seven days. That was pretty cool. And, and you've got some other languages on your plate down the road. But uh, how long have you learned Spanish? And, and what are your ultimate goals with the Spanish language? Yeah, so um, I guess now I've been learning, this is month 14 um, of learning Spanish. Uh, again, I've been quite lucky because it, I started and then not long after it was all the lockdowns, all that kind of stuff. So even though I have been working during this year, I've had quite a lot of time, obviously. Um, and yeah, so I, I got pretty obsessed with Spanish through the year. So, um, yeah, just over a year and ultimate goals, it is difficult as you know, I guess one to even define them, but two, I think because I haven't had any kind of real experience, you know, in the country or in person, you know, I've spoken to native speakers on like Omegle and stuff like that. So I know I can survive ish. But I don't know, like, maybe my level's good enough for what I want it for, which I still don't really know what that is. Or I maybe I go to Spain and, you know, next year if I have the opportunity and I just get the whatever kicked out of me and I'm like, okay, I need to actually learn Spanish now. Yeah. Um, so hard. some of it is hard because I don't really know how I am, uh, you know, next to that r- real native level. But um, I... I even though I want to learn other languages and I am going to be learning other languages, I can't bring myself to stop actively trying to develop my Spanish. Um, I don't know whether I've just become addicted or you know, whatever, it's just a habit, but um, you know, I, I enjoy language even in English. You know, I'm the kind of person that, uh, and I know it makes me look and sound like a bit of a dick sometimes, but I'm the kind of person that likes to use interesting, weird, quirky words, whatever, right. sometimes. And I, I like being able to, I guess, create an image with the way that I speak sometimes when it's necessary. Uh, some of that comes from teaching as well. You know, I've had to learn how to communicate in different ways to different types of people with different goals in mind. So, you know, learning how to adapt my language has been a part of that as well. Um, but yeah, so f- because of that, I think... I still feel like there's a lot I would like to be able to do in Spanish that I'm not able to do. Um, But I think my, my, my comprehension is, is pretty solid. I feel pretty comfortable with that. So I think it's just the kind of the slow and steady continual development of just speaking. Um, Yeah. Just trying to get more opportunities to speak and, and just developing more and more of that comfortability. Uh, I guess if you wanted to put like a label to it, it would be the sort of C1 idea. Okay. Um, which... Anybody who isn't accustomed to, to the language scale, C2 is like a native level and, and C1 would be one ring below that. And that is where, you know, you're, you're totally comfortable reading, writing, speaking and listening in that language. So. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you're, you're noticeably not native, but you're, it doesn't matter. 
yeah. <laughs> basically is like how I'd like to think about it. So, um, yeah, I think that's realistic in Spanish, especially, you know, with the interest that I've developed. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to yeah. continue plugging away and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, just to close out, uh, yeah. Because it, it's hard for me to answer this because I've I've dabbled with Spanish for long enough that it, it's difficult to remember. But uh, what advice would you have for somebody who is just starting out learning Spanish? Uh, maybe they're in their first week or month, or maybe they're going to start next week. Um, what what kind of any tips, tricks, or words of advice? Uh, you know, as they as they jump into this kind of journey. Yeah, I think from the sort of mindset perspective, you used the example before of the kind of the puzzle. Um, you know, you you have to recognize that it's going to take a little bit of time. You're going to pick up random bits here and drop off other bits there, and it's all a bit of a a bit of a mess. You have to have a bit of patience. You have to develop that tolerance for ambiguity, as um, Matt vs. Japan sort of coined it. Um, but I would I would say my number one piece of advice would be just start listening straight away, find stuff to listen to. It doesn't matter that you don't understand most of it or hardly any of it, even if you're picking out one or two words at a time. Um, you know, you, you'd need time to let your brain become accustomed to it. And I still don't really know how, but the more time you spend listening to things, the more, the more patterns your brain's able to figure out. And even just from that exposure, um, yes. you will get better. So... Uh, I have no affiliation or any kind of relationship, but I would point people to a YouTube channel called Dreaming Spanish, uh, who makes yeah videos all in Spanish from beginner level all the way to advanced. That means you can get started listening straight away, and um, yeah, I guess that would be the the direct version. But yeah, have patience. It's going to take a bit of time. Stick with it. Love it. Well, Shane, I appreciate your time. I'm going to go ahead, guys. I'm going to leave all of Shane's information below. Uh, again, he's also he is a YouTube creator, uh, and if you can, I'll be wowed. I'm going to leave his Instagram there as well because uh, you can see that he he he's kind of like a, a jack of all trades. He's I mean he's he's like a master of all trades. It's crazy. He's a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But uh, yeah, dude, again, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. I'm I'm glad we got a chance to do this and. Um, Hopefully we'll be able to do it again in the future, possibly in Spanish. We'll uh, figure something out. I think I think that'd make a great part two. We'll yeah. return to we'll, in the near future uh, in Spanish. Sounds Shane, have good. a good one.